All right, here he is. Let's talk about the roots because my relationship with the roots goes back way back. I know. I remember reading your first article from Fader. From the well, with the, I with, with the roots on one side and Cody Chestnut on the other. Yeah, well, I was living in Philadelphia during college, and uh, somebody said, "Yo, you got to go see these guys. They were going to play at the Painted Bride, this mm. uh, uh, art gallery, and." Um, it was just four of them. The Square Roots, they were called. The Square the Roots. Square roots. It was a okay. white boy on upright bass. And uh, Tariq, Black Thought in front. And Quest Love, I'll never forget, because it was this square sort of room. He got up from the drum kit and drummed a circle around the outside of the room, drumming on the wall and the floor. Kept the beat really? as he walked around the room drumming on surfaces and got back on the set. Never lost the beat. The song continued throughout all of this. It was like, <laughs> that that was extraordinary. But this is when, you know, they're playing on Saturdays and doing their thing for the public or whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, I remember watching the rise of it, right? And from, from the very beginning. So, you come along... You're like, you know, like we already are a rock star team, you know, whatever. And like, you know, like then, then, then another guy comes in, like, right, when we're already like stars, right? Like you come into like an established, professional, like serious situation. So, but and it wasn't just like you're in, right? It took a minute to like seep in, right? You're playing with them and then it grows and then you're like, now you're hired, right? Yeah, basically, um, they had, they just released Phrenology, and they were on tour, and their guitar player at the time, Ben Kenny, uh, left the band to join the band Incubus. Oh, wow. So, so the Roots were just about to go to, they already began their tour, they were about to go to Japan, and they had Vernon Reed from Living Color re replacing uh, Ben but you know that was just intermittently. Um, they needed somebody more permanent, and because Vernon had to go and be Vernon with Living Color, so I was friends. I, I befriended Vernon from my years of playing in Manhattan and sort of cutting my teeth on the scene there with various bands, various poets, drag queens. Um, and I remember seeing the Roots first time I saw the Roots live. Vernon was sitting in with them. They played five nights at the Knitting Factory. I saw them three out of those five nights, and I thought what you thought. This band is extraordinary. I wouldn't mind being in a band like that. Um, I mean, this is a great job. Oh, yeah, I'm fully aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and I, I wasn't aware what it would become. I mean, this is unusual that a player gets sucked into an established band and, like, you know, we're already making a lot of money, doing a lot of shows, doing a lot of records. Like, just come join the circus. And, like, right? I mean, that doesn't... Yeah, that's basically what happened. I was teaching preschool during the day wow. and playing in the various bands at night. And I auditioned just with Questlove. Just, it was just me and him in a room. That was my audition. Wow. And I wasn't sure if I got the gig. What is that audition like? Is he like, play me some... Play me some Hendrix. Play me some. No, he was just he just played, and we played together. I played like whatever was at the top of all. I just played whatever was. He just does a drum beat and, and I just, just played along with it. Let's just play, see if we if we gel like just the two of us. And, um, and so it's a jam. It's yeah, an improv jam. Yeah, two person improv jam. And then he stopped and he mentioned you know he mentioned uh, Jay Dilla uh -huh. and he mentioned you know. Dilla's concept of time, of of how they like to sort of play the concept of playing drunkenly yet on like but but in unison, playing behind the beat in unison, and uh, sort of pl to just play with time, you know. And I never really uh, it was never really explained to me like that before but he you know it was a very short interview but in that sh short 
period of time, he dropped that knowledge on me. And so I, you know, marinated on that. And then, and then a few days later, I got a call saying, okay, we're going to go, you know, you're going to go to Japan. And I met the rest of the band at the airport. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and then, I, then I met everybody again, you know, when we arrived in Japan. Actually, no, that's not true. I met everybody, I met some of them when they played at, at, uh, at um, Roseland. They were okay. playing a show at Roseland. I was actually getting tickets for my wife because it was on her birthday. Oh, wow. They were playing at Roseland. I was trying to get her tickets, but we wound up getting on the list because there was, I had some relevance to their performance. And I met everybody at Soundcheck. And I remember uh, Greg Tate was at the Soundcheck. Oh, oh the and, great um, Greg Tate. Yeah, and uh, Rich Nichols was there. And, oh, and they just great had manager. me. Yeah, and they just had me. I was on stage with them. And I didn't play. They just I didn't know what was going on, but it could have very well been. My hypothesis is that you wanted to see what I looked like on stage with them. Interesting. I I, that, I think I cannot confirm that or deny. That's just I don't know what else I was doing on stage. So it was a test that you didn't know. Kind of. I think so. Well, what was it like joining this established unit? Well, I think the beautiful thing was the fact that it happened in Japan. And in Japan, you're in a place where the vibe that I experienced was everybody was just so happy to see them. Because uh, it was the first time I've ever seen anything on that level of, of to, fandom. To be playing for that many people. Yeah, yeah. Like the first show was for like 5,000, like a 5,000 seater place. And, um, and then the shows following were shows at the Blue Note over there. We played like three different Blue Notes. And these were two shows a night, two sets, for a, a small audience, maybe an audience of like 150 or 100 or so. Um, and it was basically um, uh, an, exper an experiment ground, you know, where they could see how I fit in. We could try new stuff, excuse me, um, you know, just randomly, you know, he was just like, hey, you know, he just said, all right, we're gonna just play a blues solo. We're just gonna, you know, and just to see how it goes. And then that blues solo that I played wound up being part of the set for like, you know, two years, you know, but it was born in Japan. And I later realized maybe uh, it was conscious or not, but every time we'd go to Japan was seemed to be like a, t a time when we would try new things mm. for an audience that was, um, uh, it was a soulful, enthusiastic audience. But this say. changes your life to be able to join a, a band like The Roots. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and I, but I mean, and I, when I did my first gig with them, I still had my ticket stubs from the Knitting Factory, and I had them sign it because I didn't know how long I was going to last. Right, I didn't right, know. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know if I was a band aid. I didn't know if I was a band member. You know, it was just I, I wasn't sure how long it would last. So. You know, when we came back to the States and I started, you know, getting emails with our schedule, like, oh, wow, I think I'm really in this band. And then we did a summer tour where we played with uh, NERD and uh, Robert Randolph. It was the Sprite Liquid Mix Tour. Talib Kweli was on that tour. And that was, like, my first time kind of seeing America, you know, and middle America, too. And and then we did a week opening up for Dave Matthews. Oh, wow. And, and then... After, like at the end of the tour, Dave Matthews invited me on stage to do all along the Watchtower with him. Wait, how, how has it changed your life, joining the group? Well, I, I when I filled out my taxes, I could actually write musician when it asked for, asked for occupation. Oh, before that, it was preschool teacher. Yeah. And, and the roots allowed you to become a full-time musician. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean... When at the time I joined the band, I went down to part time preschool teacher because I did start getting more gigs. You know, I went going to Japan with them with them was not my first time going to Japan. My first time ever going to Japan was with a gentleman by the name of T. M. Stevens, who played bass in he played with Miles Davis, but his highest visibility was probably with. Uh, He's in the video for So Emotional with Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. He's also the black guy that was playing with the Pretenders for a stretch on uh, There's That Song, My Baby. He's in that video. 
uh, don't get me wrong, that period of the Pretenders. Mm, he was in, loved them. Yeah, he was in in that incarnation of the Pretenders. So he brought me to Japan for the first time. Um, but like I was saying, I was I I. I was getting enough gigs that I could go down to part time as a preschool teacher, but I still wanted my insurance, and my parents still, you know, th- like when I first told my parents that. I oh, you mean your health insurance? My health insurance. I thought you meant like like insurance, like take care of me. Like no, literally, like I this is this yeah, is where I get yeah. my health. Oh insurance. yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> literal <laughs> insurance, my friend. That's why I, mean, I had to like answer to my parents. Because rock bands don't have insurance. Yeah. yeah. That was, an, I mean, and then modern day insurance, like that didn't kick in until we started doing like probably the, uh, late night with Jimmy. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. So anyhow, I mean, when I told my parents I might be joining this band called The Roots and I might have to leave Greenwich House Preschool, they're like, Kirk, what about your insurance? <laughs> Kirk, the man carried Gonyana. This is a rap group. Like they were really concerned. They thought you were joining NWA. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, don't no. They <laughs> no no. They smell like incense and berries. Like they're, <laughs> the, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> uh, 